talk about cameras today. I'm going to examine it and find out how it works. Let's do it. You see upside down and backwards. Consider this diagram. Got a person and his picture is being taken. This box is our camera and the lens being this tiny hole. When you think about the first few cameras invented, this was literally the simplest mechanism. Just a black box and a hole and in the back of it, a piece of film or a plate which is exposed to this tiny amount of light. And a manual shutter would open and close that hole for a short amount of time. Now, if we consider the optics behind this, this person, the light from this person, um, say that they're in a very well-lit environment, it will go through, straight, travel in a straight line through the lens, which is just our small hole, and will end up down here in the back of our camera where the plate is. The light from the person's feet will end up way up here. This is just a very simple explanation, but interestingly, it is kind of intuitive when you think about it. Why the image ends up upside down in the back of the camera. And interestingly, that's kind of what our brain sees when we go, th when the light comes through our eyes, our lenses, the hole right here, it'll end up backwards and upside down in the back of our head. But the way that our brain has corrected for that is we see it right side up. But interestingly, if you think about it, we're seeing everything upside down. It's just our brain's correcting it for us. But that's just a small intuitive explanation of why we see upside down and backwards. So in photography, there are two main things to adjust. The shutter speed of the camera and the aperture. Both are involving the tiny hole where light comes through and it, it hits a sensor, a light, uh, light sensitive sensor, but in olden days it was film. Um, nowadays it's a sensor. And based on how we adjust the aperture value and the shutter speed value, it impacts how our photo turns out. We're going to examine that even closer now. Why does aperture and shutter speed affect the image that you're about to take? Shutter speed is the duration that the light is exposed to the film. Through a tiny hole, this hole will be open and closed in a fraction of a second. What does a high shutter speed value mean? Usually when someone says high shutter speed, they're meaning a large fraction, meaning the large numbers on the denominator of the fraction, because it's measured in fractions of a second. So say a shutter speed of 320, people are usually saying 1 320th of a second is how long the hole, the light goes through the hole and is exposed to the film. Now aperture on the other hand, a large value of aperture, interestingly, means a smaller hole. What's the effect of a smaller hole? Smaller hole gives more depth of field, meaning you can see everything in the distance if you have a really large aperture. If you have a small aperture value, it means shallow depth of field. So if you have like an aperture of like 4 or 3.5, you have the, the lens zoomed in on, a, say, a squirrel in the background or a turtle, only the turtle's face will be in focus and the, everything around it will kind of blur in the background, which is very important because without the, abil the ability to change aperture and shutter speed, we wouldn't be able to... photography would be pretty boring, but because we have the ability to change these things, we can make photography extremely creative and unique with every picture that we take by adjusting these values of shutter speed and aperture. What does high shutter speed get you and what does low shutter speed get you? High shutter speed makes your image crisper. Like in sports photography, you're gonna to wanna to use high shutter speed so you can get a nice crisp photo even when motion is happening. A low shutter speed will give you a nice soft um, image because it'll blend um, what happens. So if, uh, if my hand's moving across the screen and if it's a low shutter speed, my hand would blur in the image as you wave it around. But if you have high shutter speed, you'll capture instances in time where my hand 
is in certain positions like this. So it's very important what you're trying to record. If you're doing sports photography, high shutter speed is where it's at. Now, aperture, on the other hand, if you are going to do high aperture and high shutter speed, there's going to be a little bit of a problem because if you remember what I told you before, high shutter speed means less light coming through and high aperture means less light coming through because a high aperture is a smaller hole and a high shutter speed is a less duration of the light coming through the hole. So how do you adjust for this? Oftentimes you can adjust the ISO of your camera, the ISO value, uh, makes the light sensitivity higher but other times you're just going to have to take and give a little bit. It's kind of a balance. In order to compensate for that light um, loss or gain, you're going to have to adjust the uh, shutter speed as well as the aperture together. So they're, they're dependent on one another, which is why it's important that you, as a photographer, are going to have to make this uh, call with every picture that you take, adjusting that shutter speed value and adjusting that aperture value to make the best photo given your situation. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and see you next time.